Crazies, it's Lee. You're in the lab, and yes, you see this evil kind of grin that I got on my face and you see this title he has the guy calling the Mandela effect dumb uh, basically people dumb the Mandela effect people dumb it, it, it goes on we're gonna watch this we're gonna react the way I do it before I get this going though I want everybody to understand that I'm not trying to throw shade at this dude because this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about and just because he is still basically just got out of the pull-ups that he is wearing and how young on his little bouncy ball that he's doing doesn't mean that he knows what us fucking old timers these 41s these 50s these 60 year old motherfucking og people out in this world remember the reality is you know so but with that if you do like this at any time y'all remember to hit that thumbs up button subscribe and leave your comments down below about this and about this video and i'll leave his link down there too as well because you know I'm not trying to throw shade, but I'm putting my sense on it too because I respect everybody's opinion, but sometimes an opinion can just lead a little bit way out there. So y'all sit back and enjoy this shit. It's gonna be good. Hello everyone, my name is JJ, and today we are going to talk about the dumbest thing in the entire world. It is called Canada. the Mandela Effect. A lot of people on the internet are really obsessed with this thing. You can find tons and tons of YouTube videos about it. So everyone's talking about the situation called the Mandela Effect. What is the Mandela me. Effect? Really Ten really freakiest examples of the Mandela Effect. Mandela Effect. Mandela Effect. Mandela Effect. Mandela Effect. It even has its own subreddit. So, what is it and oh, why is it so stupid? Basically, the entire premise of the Mandela Effect is that people sometimes have bad memories. That is literally all there is to it. Some we sometimes have bad memories and that's literally, that's all to it. So you're saying these core memories that we have in our past, in our childhood, of these Mandela effects of what it really was. You're telling me that we didn't link that in. Our brains are more compatible and more so powerful than his brain could even imagine. Sometimes we have very vivid memories of things that we think happen, but actually didn't. This phenomenon has been extensively studied by psychologists and psychiatrists and criminologists and journalists and historians, but the Mandela effect is not interested in it. Criminalists? Criminalists? Why the fuck would a criminalist want to suggest that I could see that trying to see if this is the reason why this guy committed a crime because he thought the Kit Kat had the damn thing on it, but no, no, no. And it has been proven to, not proven, but most of these scientists and physicists and researchers about the Mandela effect have come to the conclusion that they have no explanation about what's causing this and why some of their memories are exactly the same as ours. Any of that? No, what the Mandela effect does is it takes this very ordinary, very common human tendency and weaves it into this whole elaborate conspiracy theory. The name comes from Nelson Mandela. He was a famous black South African freedom fighter who was imprisoned from the mid 1960s to the early 1990s for opposing the racist government of his country. Now, apparently a lot of people have memories that Nelson Mandela died during this period. I really do not know how anyone could possibly sustain this belief. Which the research was done back in 2009 by, as you already know, that she took a whole freaking research thing about Nelson Mandela and found out that there was millions of people that believed he passed away in the early 80s. If considering that the release of research. Nelson Mandela from prison in 1990 was one of the single most acclaimed events of the 20th century, as was Nelson Mandela's subsequent election as president of South Africa, which made him one of the single most famous world leaders of all time. But yeah, so apparently some people managed to miss all that. They missed the coverage of him winning the Nobel Peace Prize That's and meeting so. with Bill Clinton and meeting with the Queen and meeting with Oprah and criticizing the Iraq war and all the rest of it. They were like, no, I'm fairly sure he died in prison and now maybe i'm not mistaken but i never remember him meeting the queen which is weird because that's shown everywhere in, in everywhere in the world and in I, I don't understand that my ignorance maybe my false memory remember 
And when Nelson Mandela really did die in the year 2013, they were apparently like, mind blown. How to explain it? Well, the correct answer is these people were almost impossibly ignorant of the world around them, but that is not satisfying enough. So instead, the correct answer must surely be <laughs> impossibly ignorant about the world around them. Where the fuck did the world go? We vanished somewhere in 2012, but you're gonna call us ignorant because we have a memory of something that we remember and I'm still lying from money banks? How can we misremember something we never knew? Fuck. Alternate universes may have collided or even merged with our own. Some people think it might be proof of parallel universes. Not only are there multiple parallel universes, but they're colliding and crossing in some way. Collapsing timelines and Maybe other parallel dimensions, which is why some people remember the old timeline and some people have the memory of the new timeline. Great work though, I love when the there is a shift in gravity, it's like a possibility that a rift in our time space would open up and you would be able to see into a different time space. Yes, of course, alternate dimensions. That makes so much more sense. People of the so-called Mandela Effect community have since used this bizarre logic to explain a vast number of things that they remember being- Why not? I mean, you have, you know, Einstein and fucking all these people doing parallel universes, string theory, even fucking Stephen Hawkins himself said that there was a multiverse out there. I mean, come on now one way, but are in fact actually a different way. Such examples of the Mandela Effect usually fall into the following categories. One is subtle differences between the names of things. The famous example is the Baron Stain Bears, which is spelled S-T-A-I-N. I'm sorry. I, I can't get, I, I still, I've watched this couple, I can't get off the bouncing shit. If I was on a city bouncing ball, it would piss me off somewhere, but... <sighs> like the stain on a shirt. Apparently a lot of people remember it being the spelled Baron Stein, like S-T-E-I-N, like Einstein. Other people remember Sex Jewish. and the City being called Sex in the City, or Jif Peanut Butter being called Jiffy. The obvious explanation for why this is, is that these like the people just did ever. not take these things very seriously. So with the Berenstain Bears, these were books that were written for children, and as a result, a lot of people probably did not read them themselves, or if they did, they probably didn't pay. Which? we also read to our children. It, it, you know, that's the thing he doesn't take. Yeah, we got read those as children, but we kept these books and we remember reading them to our children, playing, reading them freaking when we were playing house or something, you know, we, it's a staple in our, in society, what we grew up to. You know, we're fucking 80, 70, 60, 70, 80s kids, man. We ain't a fucking millennial. A lot of attention to the spelling of the author's last name. As an adult, you do often meet people whose last names end with S T E I N, people whose last names end with stain is more unusual, so that's why people just assume that Baron Stain must have been spelled that way. This is really not very deep stuff. Another supposed example is like very subtle design elements of like logos or cartoon characters. So it's like, did the Kit Kat logo have a hyphen or not? Okay. Did the Monopoly guy have a monocle okay. or not? If you give the wrong answer, it must be proof that you're from a different universe or whatever. And again, the obvious explanation for this is that people are just not that observant. For example, I can be like, did Donald Duck not have a bow on the front of his shirt or not? And unless you really care about Donald Duck, you probably amount. could not answer that this question with gun to your head certainty. Your brain has probably elected to not store information that trivial. Wrong. Your brain stores every ounce of fucking every information you receive, you look at, you hear, you touch, you smell, anything. We take it in all. We choose to throw that memory out or not. Because let us be clear, the supposed manifestations of the Mandela Effect are always about incredibly trivial things. Everyone is always like, in my timeline, the Coca-Cola logo was slightly more askew. No one is ever like, in my timeline, Coca-Cola came in blue cans and was made of apple juice. Same. Another commonly okay. cited supposed Mandela Effect thing is famous movie quotes not actually being from movies. So, Luke, I am your father, is not actually said in Star Wars. Instead, the scene goes like, He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. Or Hannibal Lecter doesn't actually say hello Clarice in Silence of the Lambs. There's lots of other examples. Now, this is an example of what more serious- Now see, us Star Wars geeks that watch this fucking things in the movie theaters, watched it with your parents for the first time, and you remember your parents even saying, Look, 
I am your father. The best part of the movie. Millions of us. Come on now. Come on. These people just call a misquote, which is a famous or memorable saying attributed to a person that they didn't actually say. So for example, let them eat cake by Marie Antoinette is a very famous misquote. Misquotes can often arise so from cleaning up or editing an actual quote into something a bit more punchy and memorable. Or sometimes they're just completely made up lines that nevertheless sound like something that person would say. So Luke, I am your father might not be what Darth Vader actually said, but it is a more memorable phrase than no, I am your father, and it sounds better when taken out of Now that's funny because even James Earl Jones himself even said, when I looked at the script and I saw Luke, I am your father. I was like, how am I gonna pull that off? And you know that context and saying hello Clarice in this sort of creepy voice is the kind of thing Hannibal Lecter would say, which is why we like to say it. Lastly, the fourth kind of so-called Mandela effects are just plain old ignorance. There's no deep explanation for these ones, it's just people being obviously- The word ignorance again. Ignorance, ignorance, ignorance. The only person who uses that word ignorance, not trying to say the other word, is an ignorant person dumb or wrong about something. A lot of the Mandela people insist that in their universe there was a movie called Shazam starring Sinbad. They are obviously just misremembering oh, the movie Kazam starring Shaq, but perhaps they just don't want to admit that they got two black guys confused. There's this one channel on YouTube that does a lot of Mandela effect video. How the fuck are we gonna get Sinbad, this light-skinned brother like myself, with orange hair and get fucking seven foot, 20 foot inch can Shaquille O'Neal, black as day, mixed up. Can you tell me that? And it has just descended into the two guys talking about things that they've never heard of, like That's say, of Victoria boot. Falls. I'm always looking at like the most beautiful waterfalls in the world because you know, I'm being a photographer. I'm just waterfalls. so fascinated by this thing. Nice. And when I came across this just a few days ago, because I was researching some of this stuff, it was like I was seeing something out of a Absolutely. dream. I'm like, why didn't I ever hear of this Viagra. thing before? It's so beautiful. And I have like no memory of it. Victoria Falls Victoria. is one of the most famous waterfalls in the entire world. If you don't uh, know, it exists. Uh, That's that kind of on you. And here we get to the core of the whole problem. Any self-help person will tell you that one of the most important qualities you can develop as a human is a sense of humility. Humility is the ability to admit that you have the capacity to be wrong or make mistakes or screw things up or just generally be bad at stuff. Now, I like how you self-help people, knowing how I am, you know, I'm a self-help, I'm a fucking spiritual fucking person, knowing I'm being who I am now. But you're gonna tell us to be ability and own up to our own memories? That's what we're doing. We understand that nobody can remember everything that we can remember, but we also understand that not everybody is gonna have that memory we have because they weren't doing the same thing to stoke that memory inside our brain. And the thing is, we can admit when we're wrong. We can admit when we're not sure about something. That's the funny thing about it. The problem is, maybe he can't admit that he knows that he's seen this Mandela effect a lot, a lot more too. He don't want to admit that from time to time. A well-developed sense of humility will not only make you more attractive to other people, it is also key to your own personal growth and self-improvement. Think about a person that you really respect. Chances are he or she is probably very charismatic, but they probably also have a certain quiet dignity. And that kind of quiet dignity comes from realizing the limits of your own capacities and understanding that you do not have to be right about everything all the time. The Mandela effect by contrast is basically the antidote to humility. It's a theory that provides an excuse for never having to. It is the antidote to humility. It's an excuse. An excuse? It's an excuse to share and to try to figure out what our memories are telling us. It's an excuse to, to show the world or the people who are waking up the truth of this world. It's an excuse to have our own memory and feeling. So it's an excuse for me to be who I am. That hurts. It doesn't hurt, but it hurts. That's that's the most 
fucked up thing you could ever say about anything is that you're making a fucking excuse. And then fuck that shit. You admit to the flawed nature of your own memory and thus your own personal kind of unreliability. It says, reality. oh no, you could not possibly be wrong about even the most trivially unimportant fact. It must be the very fabric of time and space conspiring against you. When you look at the folks who are really hardcore into the Mandela effect stuff, they really come off as some of the most insufferably self-centered people on Earth. Once you Insufferably self-centered people on Earth. Wow. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, Mendelians? Did you hear that, the older generation? Holy moly, the most self-centered. Oh, is that. Wow. Wow, for somebody who can't admit to himself to raise his level up and to admit that maybe he's not right neither. You know, nobody said we were right. We're just talking about what we see. Maybe he can't see the truth. Maybe he needs to walk out of Plato's cave. Buy into this idea that your ability to be wrong is actually the universe's fault. There is no limit to the crazy places this can take you. So for example, on the Mandela Effect Reddit, you see people who seriously argue that every word they do not know how to spell or pronounce no, correctly is actually a Mandela yes, Effect. Well, in this. my universe, it used to be spelled dreamt. In mine, Pharaoh was spelled Pharaoh. Hillary Clinton's name used to have one L, but now it suddenly has two. In my universe, it's pronounced Yosemite. Plus tons and tons Yosemite. of just unapologetic ignorance. America didn't used to be the third biggest country on earth. All the countries in Africa are moving around. Iceland looks too weird where it is. Is water wetter than it used to be? This does not seem very healthy to me. No, like a lot wetter. of these people That's are stupid. clearly quite young and yet they are getting very- now. He did make this statement. Now, some of these people are clearly quite young. Like I said before, you have 30 plus, 40 plus, 60 plus, 50 plus. I flipped it all. Older generations are noticing that. So if you weren't around as a kid as in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, learning this, being part of this whole show of advertisement, show of enjoyment and entertainment, then you wouldn't know what the fuck we be talking about. Diaper boy. Very into this idea that they themselves are the sole arbiter of matters of quite objective fact. Instead of learning humility and trying to self-improve by maybe getting better at spelling or geography, they are just doubling down on this conspiracy theory where they always get to be right. I take it back. There are alternate universes after all. The one where mature adults live and this one. Pick yours carefully. I pick my universe and I like the universe that I'm in and a lot of us in is kind of the reality of man this world is fucked up this reality isn't what it is and to hear this guy basically call everybody who has a memory either if it's false truth or flipped around in this Mandela effect in this world is ignorant dumb stupid self-centered basically a child it, it, it it's appalling to me. It's wrong. You know, you should never, ever, ever opinionate somebody else's opinion just because that's their opinion. That's their memory. Moneybag says it best. I hate to say it. Thank you, brother. But you know, he says you cannot misremember something you never knew. But what did you think about this video, man? Did you enjoy this at any time? Hit that thumbs up button. Leave me your comments down below and also smash that subscription too as well. With that, man, y'all keep your mind open because those damn eyes and those ears will hear every, see everything in front of you. Man, y'all stay crazy. I'm going to hang up this phone and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Where we go from there. It's a choice I leave to you.